Hello everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, we're at the bottom of the ocean. And yes, I know, I'm Steve again, but this time I actually have an excuse. You see here, I'm in the skin selection menu, I try to reload my saved skin, and it just won't reload. But as you can see, today, we're here at an ocean monument. And the reason for that is, not because we want to see those guardians, although they do look really cool trying to swim through the water. What we're here for today is I'm going to be trying to renovate an ocean monument to make it into a livable base that you could live in in survival. Now I know this has probably been done before, but I'm going to hopefully do it differently than other people you may have seen do it. So without further ado, I guess me and my character are going to have to go and build this ocean monument up nicely for you guys at home to be watching. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just fill in all the arches around the ocean monument with glass. That way we can fill the inside with air and, well, not have the water come in. Keeping the original arches of the ocean monument makes it look really cool because it still looks like an ocean monument. Yet, well, you can live in it, and that's kind of the effect I'm going for here. I'm just building up a front porch area because the original entrance to the ocean monument is just a big gravel canyon through the middle of it, and that isn't very attractive. The next thing you want to do is tidy up all the edges, get rid of any gravel or ground in the way, clean it all up, clean up the inside, make your entrance, and then start emptying the, at least the beginning part of all the water, so it's just air. You can see here I'm using sponges going through the ocean monument bit by bit, cleaning out the air. In the ocean monument, it's really easy to get lost. You do not want to get lost in the ocean monument because, well, that's just plain annoying. The other thing is that in the ocean monument, it's really dark. There's a lot of sea lanterns, but they kind of don't help with all the dark corners. So you just want to keep on lighting it up as best as possible. And no matter how hard you try, there always seems to be another patch of water. But eventually, in the end, you do manage to get rid of all the water. The main problem is that usually it's a big loop. Like, you have water elevators that go up into rooms, which then go down to the bottom story again. And if you're doing this in survival, you have to find the sponges in the ocean monument before you even begin. This ocean monument had two sponge rooms, but both were pretty well hidden, and I didn't even find them until I'd already dried up almost the whole monument. I'd already started to decorate and clean it up. You can see here that I'm starting to label the different levels and rooms and put directions and arrows around because I was getting a little bit lost and I didn't want to make it all in the wrong levels. It doesn't help that there are staircases and like unsuspected gradients, I guess. There are little slopes that you wouldn't suspect, but then when you follow them, you end up in a different level that you didn't want to be in. The next thing, of course, you want to do is to separate the different areas. Designate an area for your crafting area. Designate an area for your farms. Once you've done that, it's going to be much easier to build in the ocean monument because you already know what you're going to build in the different spots. If you need more room than you already have, then remember there's a whole other story underneath that's just full of water and has no walls. With all the, like, um, stone and resources you're getting from digging out the ocean monument, there is definitely going to be enough to make the bottom story, which at the moment is just pillars, to be another room. I'll come back to that near the end, but I just thought I'd tell you now. So you can see I've been cleaning out all of the random pillars. You do not want random pillars and messes throughout your whole ocean monument. You'll see in the end it's a much cleaner result than it was when I started. I'm just now putting in pathways where there weren't, because before, remember, you could swim. Now you can't, meaning that lots of the places you used to be able to get to, you can no longer get to. So make sure you've bridged all those spots, and once you've got it all completely labelled, you can start decorating. I'm just putting in a lava pool and two aquariums, because you need aquariums. And I put in some cake, because you need food. The next step 
is to separate things, because in the Ocean Monument there are some pretty big rooms, especially around the outside. So you want to separate those into multiple rooms, or else it will just get too big and it will be overwhelming to decorate and a hard room to use. Once you've separated it, it's just a matter of, you know, filling the little rooms with a little bit of detail, instead of filling massive rooms with small amounts of detail and it not looking good. Or trying to over detail it and then it just looking crowded. You do not want to over detail or under detail it. This motion monument, I'm just doing it to show you what could be done. I'm not going to be making any of the really intricate details. I'm not going to be making any of the farms. I'm just going to be showing you how it's going to, how it could be done. I'm not even going to decorate all the bedrooms properly. I'm just going to put beds in and maybe some chests. But that's not what I'm trying to show you today. What I'm trying to show you is that it is possible and kind of how to get around doing it and keeping it looking like an ocean monument. You can see here there's more arches at the back of the ocean monument that are at the same level as the third story of the inside of the ocean monument, which sounds confusing, but it's really not all that confusing once you see it. And I will put glass on them too so that would look good. Something I started noticing was that there were zombies everywhere, so I turned off my night vision and sure enough it was pitch black in all these rooms. So I went around lighting up everything I could and putting in windows to help there be more light. Lighting it up from sea lanterns is a good idea because it matches the theme of the ocean monument. The only problem with using sea lanterns is that they're very hard to come by in survival. The other problem with ocean monuments is not everything inside of the monument matches up. I had this amazing staircase which went down into this room with a big pillar in the middle, but it didn't line up with the door. The staircase was to the right of the door, so it had to move the whole room over to the left by one block to make it fit properly. I know most people wouldn't go into that effort, but I just felt like I needed to or else it wouldn't look good. Now I'm just having a storage area because you need lots of storage. and. I do go a little bit over the top with the chests. You'll see that at the end of the video when I do a tour of it. But I just, you know, we need chests. Chests are good. Where else are you going to put your stuff? So this is my the very top. And here's the dome at the very top. Just so that I could put like a little spot just for the owner of the ocean monument to live in. For your own bed. So you've got your own spot where nobody else can go at the very top which I think is cool. Now let's give you a tour. So the first thing of course you'll notice as you swim in is that it's no longer wet. You probably saw me adding this front area in the time lapse and I just think it's quite a nice entrance to the sea monument. You can see I've made the original doorway smaller as it used to be a weird arch that was like inset. But you come in and you can see I've got lots of signs everywhere because originally before I changed the layout I kept on getting lost. So this is level one, and it does get confusing because some state, like some sections of level two, end up somehow in level one, and you get lost and work, have to work out how to get back to where you were before. But I think I've worked it all out now. So this is level one. You see, I've got a lounge here. It's a nice big couches. I didn't do much decorating inside. I was just trying to prove the theory that you could live in a sea temple. In here we've got our trophy room, guest rooms and refreshments. Our refreshments are in here. You can see we've got our fish tanks. And here's our refreshments room. Just don't step on the cake as you walk through. And you've got guest room number one. And in here it's just got some beds and with the roses because guests love with the roses. And in here we've got guest room number two. We've got this elevators and you can see I've just got up and down. So we go on the up elevator and then we have another elevator which goes back down to level one to another room that you didn't see before that overlooks the guest room number two and through here we've got this weird room with a pillar in the middle and I liked it this was already here so I decided to keep it and through here you'd see level two industrial this is where you would have all your farms and stuff I just haven't built any farms because 
I'm already like two hours, 15 minutes in and I've been at this a while and it's now dark outside. Enchanting room here because this little nook was already here overlooking the lounge area down there. I thought this is a good spot to read books, so I put my enchanting table here. I hid the ladder because this is where you get your, your storage ladder. And I went a bit crazy with chests. I, I, I patterned them and I've got them here and there and this chests around here and we've got the crafting tables. Yeah, you get the idea. I'm not going to need a time lapse of you looking at all of my chests. Yeah, that's background to the beginning again. So then you come up here, and this is your personal room. You've got all your special chests for where you want to put your, your, your that, um, armor, swords, stuff. You got your furnaces so you can smelt your diamonds. Although I don't know what kind of person digs the diamond ore with a silk touch pickaxe just to smelt it in a furnace. I mean. You get XP from the furnace, but you also get XP from mining the diamonds, so that kind of seems like a waste of time. You've got this. This is the little dome thing that's on top of the ocean monuments. I just put glass on it, and you can see that I've got here some iron doors, and if I grab a, if I grab a boat, and I go out here, hopefully this is going to work this time, because it would be embarrassing if I didn't. And... That was very loud. And you and your boat are at the surface. Perfect. And you see, I put these posts out the water so people can leash their boats to it just in case they're worried about them floating away off for some reason. I'm just gonna... Yep, there we go. There you go. And... I just think it's pretty cool because it still looks like an ocean monument. It still is an ocean monument and you live in it. Of course, as I said before, you've got all this space too. So if you outgrow... Eurasian Monument, just go down, because you've got all this. This is a lot of space, and something I'm going to say, this little bit that juts down here, that's not usually there, I added that because I thought it was a bit ugly to have all that gravel underneath this entrance, because this would all have just been gravel, that would have been open, it would have looked terrible. So I thought I'd add this part. I didn't go to the effort of adding this, this bottom story, but I'm just about out of time. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you liked me restoring the Ocean Monument, then, well, like the video, please. I would really appreciate it. And... Oh, I just realised. I know. Caught in a little bit of a tangent here. But you could use these as, like, little terrariums. You could, like, put animals in there. And close it off with glass. Don't know how you'd get them in there. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope you like the final product. Bye!